Originally, I heard about the uh, project through the uh, the Foreshore Trust, which was they had um, got a small grant uh, uh, to put a sculpture onto the promenade. I mean, hopefully, what they're hoping to do is to have a series of sculptures. It was a, a project that can get linked with the schools. Uh, Sarah Evans and, and Peter Cornell went around the schools, and the, the kids were making sculptures, little tin foil sculptures out of yogurt pots and found objects that were found on the beach and this, that and the other. But what was a little tricky is trying to make something which can endure the weather, the strains of a bit of public art, public climbing all over it and everything. But I really started to love this, you know, eat, you know this very tall structure of all these elements on there. So I was just like looking for all of these things, trying to find different ways of um, of bringing these bits, all of these bits of work into a final sculpture. So I'm gonna get them cast in steel up at a local found, um, foundry, um, and actually then you know weld them all into the base. So there'll be different elements. You know, like say for instance this one here. I mean that tail there is just absolutely spot on and that whole structure coming down the back there. So that could be cast and just laid and, and, and made as part of the structure. So when the kids, you know, come down and try and find it, they'll sort of look over the sculpture and then you'll say, oh, that was my one. And it'll be sort of an imprint of it in the side of the actual um, structure. It's not gonna have like a big sign over it saying, do not litter the beach. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be immediately obvious, but I think if people investigate further into the project and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the thought process that went behind it and everything, then there is emphasis on don't chuck litter in the sea. So I started drawing the forms, uh, which very, very quickly I realised are mussel shell shapes. But this was the very first drawing that I'd done and it sort of came off the back of this one here really, a mixture of this one here and the textures that you're finding in the bottoms of the, of the um, the structures, forms and shapes and repetitive patterns. And then I went on to this one, which was sort of a sort of a take on that one there. So this was the direction it was going in. And I uh, had to do a little drawing of roughly what materials I was gonna be using, the kind of height and all that kind of stuff. But quickly realized it was sort of getting too tall. So this was right at the very beginning and I needed to try and convince uh, the council that they actually want this. Yes, so this one here is the one that I got my heart set on. I don't know, there was just something about it. It was, a, you know, it was abstract enough, but had, you know, this... It just is a way that I love the way these three here cluster, go, go across the top of the larger one. So I knew that that would be a really interesting reflective area because you've got this one over the top of the other. This is showing the, uh, the foundations and the stone and the fixing points. And again, you've got the, 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 the sculpture, the little uh, sculptures that the kids have made into this area here and up the back and around the side and the front. Um, I didn't want it to be, have any concrete. You know, I want it to be, I don't want, you know, if this sculpture ever has to be taken down, I don't want to have any trace of it being there. So, uh, so the actual foundations themselves is a great big structure which will have pebbles taken from the beach uh, and put actually put into it as a counterbalance so the whole thing will be um, no concrete so th this is when the steel comes in so that's a sheet of the, uh, the 316 marine grade it's a, a 0 0.9 thick so I've cut one out there and in here is one that I'm sort of working on. So this, uh, this machine is a, is a hydraulic press and it just continuously, each time I push it down, it will slowly but surely, but the edges go really, really ripply. You've got to cut, these have all got to be sort of pulled out and um, you're constantly having to fight against the material. It, it doesn't really want to do this. <laughs> but I won't, I, will, I won't give up, so I'll just keep on squashing it and then, but when it, you know, it does actually sort of lay quite flat. So when it's got the mild steel structure that holds all of these into position, they will hold everything into position. I hope, I think. 
So all we've got to do now is we've got to go onto this lovely old machine called an English wheel. So at the moment, what I'm focusing on is making all of these reflective surfaces, which is the main part of the sculpture. But of course, I need to hold, get them all held in position. Um, so I'll be moving on to mild steel once I've got these. And then once I've got the mild steel, it'd be like I'm set, you know, setting these like you would a stone in a ring. <clears throat> it's pretty basic, no electrics, which is always nice. Like free to run, it's just, just manpower. Oh, there you <laughs> so this is like a continuous hammer, hammer strike. It's just on the, and it squeezes the metal. And eventually, what it does, it just keeps on forming it over that roller that's underneath. And the more you go backwards and forwards, the smoother it gets. Can you see those marks starting to form up on the top there? So each time you run, it's squashing it, but you've got to do it over the whole thing evenly. But at least I can say that I've actually had made it myself. It's not been uh, it's not been shipped in from overseas or anything. It's made in Hastings. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not a massive sculpture, but it will be, uh, it will, the reflections should be, uh, you know, make it feel bigger than it is, because there'll be a lot going on uh, with the light bouncing off it and everything. I was leaving the biggest one till last, because I sort of learnt a few things as I've been working through these ones. Um, I knew the big one was going to be a troublesome, but if I persist, <laughs> I shall overcome it. Look at it, looks like one of those, um, magic fish that you put on the palm of your hand that tells your foot tells your future what's that going to be <laughs> i mean the reflection i'm going to go for will never be completely pure but um it will work it's going to work they're quite nice just doing that aren't they let's just have it like that <laughs> Just on the edge of the circumference of that bit of rod. There's a combination of materials being used, mild steel, which will be galvanized, which will be very sensitive to the, to the changing seasons. You know, it goes very dull and in the winter months and very brighter in the summer months and it dries out and stuff. The front being the stainless, which will be all polished. So obviously that's gonna be immediately showing what's happening. And then you've got the stone itself, which was got out of a quarry just uh, quite locally and um, that's a big old lump of sandstone and um, actually fossilized seabed, which is just amazing. So there was, a, there was this whole period of time at the beginning where I was a bit nervous of starting it because I've you know, gone through all the planning permission, I've gone through all these things, but it's just a drawing on a piece of paper and, and, and the process in my head. And I was thinking, what happens if I can't actually make these large you know these forms i thought i didn't think i was gonna have any problem with the smaller ones if i just bring one in you know i didn't think i was gonna have any you know problem with these ones because that's you know i've made you know forms this kind of size before um that aren't really far off of that but that's like the small one <laughs> well I th i, i'm hoping that the sculpture will be you know quite a fun 
interactive piece. I mean, you know, there's not going to be any moving parts apart from the people's reflections that are actually in in the um, in the mirrors themselves. But also, I mean, because they're all different sizes and density and, and curved, all the images should be different, which are uh, not different, but, you know, different magnifications, which would be great, I think. And you're going to, people are going to be able to look over the back of their shoulder and see the sea and they're up, they'll be upside down and it should be a bit, yeah, chaotic. Well, what's lovely is, you know, all the time that these objects have just been sitting on the deck, you know, on the workbench, they're all very, you know, and then in their singular form, they're a very tactile item, aren't they? You know, it's like a, you know, a fruit bowl or something, I don't know, it's a, you know. But they are all to go, you know, playing a part into this. So they're finally having their, finding their place. So yeah, slowly but surely, it's all coming together. I've got to I've drilled the holes through here and then underneath make this sort of metal box, which is what bit goes into the ground. And then that gets back filled with pebbles from the beach, which would be really quite a nice process, getting a bit of a community action with a chain of people with buckets. In its whole entirety, it's gonna be very rigid and very strong. You can clamber over it if you want to and everything. That one goes in about there. You're gonna get the sound of the sea reflected back into their ears and... I think what my concerns are is when I, this is to make sure that when that big one goes on, it's, it's also gonna have that cup around. Because what I'm worried is these ones are just sort of nicely coming around like that, which I'm really liking. But when that big one goes on, there's enough curve in that one to do the same. So that one is gonna sit right up there somewhere. Hi! About there. Something like that, I think. So that one's got, is almost as polished as I'd want it to be. You can see the, re the reflection, that one's quite prominent. That's the, that's the other thing I like about it, is that the view that you have is only your own, is only your personal view. I love this bit. <laughs> My kids used to think I just had the best job in the world. Yeah, if it's only fine. they knew. It's that moment when you think, why did I just say yes? I know. I just, uh, you know, I think it's smoke and mirrors. It's the way, isn't it? You got to, you yeah. got to, you get them on, get them on the off. If you off really chance. tell people what you're going to do, they just they go, no, no way, mate. Too busy. We can't have this. So if I'm doing this, we're burying what we don't want. And oh, hope, so you're burying what you don't want. That's yeah. It, yeah. And that's hopefully, it. again, you're a good with a grinder, aren't you? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> ah. It's just lovely to be able to bring another skill into the, uh, the build of this. It's for the local town, isn't it? That's what makes it really good. Yeah. I love doing local stuff. I have absolutely no idea how it's going to look. <laughs> on the suits. And does this stuff set as well? No. No, this is, just no, this is purely pattern maker's wax. But you could spend hours yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this. So what, what temperature is the iron now at? Is it like 11? 15. 15? 15. 1500, yeah. 15. It gets warm in here in August. So that's the virgin sand. That right. Color. Yeah. That's brand, brand new sand, if you like. Right. And then the next stuff we put on will be the recycled sand. Because ah. you get a slightly tougher finish with the version sand. Far enough away to forget work and home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm trying to achieve. Yes, that's, that looks good. Still me. But it straight away looks like a fossil. Hmm. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. And then essentially the. Cast that, and then and that can go and go on the there. End, couldn't you? That would work. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't hmm.
But it was a great process getting all the, um, all the work um, cast uh, from the, the kids' projects. This is the, the main one that inspired the actual um, sculpture. So that's there. It's even picked up the, uh, the corrugation of the cardboard. It's quite amazing how detailed it is. And then these are actually um, shells um, we found on the beach. And the other thing that's been quite nice about this process is that there I've actually used no heat, apart from welding it. Obviously, all this is all welded, but every single piece of steel has been bent by hand. So there's no kind of heavy, you know, it's all to help keep the co cost down, really. We're at this stage now. <laughs> um, basically putting all of this uh, steel work into the main structure, get it galvanized, get it back here, you know, do the patination properly, get all the bits attached properly. And then when it comes to installation, it's, it's, more, it's planned correctly. And we've done some test lifts with the, uh, with the crane and, and what have you. And, and also it's, you know, it, before the, the promenade becomes a really busy place, as it does in the middle of the summer, it'd be, uh, it'd be good to sort of, yeah, install it yeah, mid-March, I reckon. So like this bit here comes off. And that comes off of there. <coughs> so there's gonna be a lifting eye that comes out the center of here to about here. And this is just simply so that I can get access to that one bolt that's in there. That's a lot of effort just to uh, get access to the fixing point, but you know, it's gotta be fixed down, isn't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's like a crossover between some kind of sea creature, seaweed. It's still unnamed as well. I still do not know what to call it. It's just constantly been in my life for nearly a, you know, a, a, near on a year. And uh, yeah, it's the, it's the general public, isn't it? When they see it and go, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> How did I get the hole? Yeah. Ricky dug it. Ricky, my right hand man. Left, left, left hand man. I mean, it's not exactly the biggest hole. The next sculpture though. Definitely sort of getting close to my limit of soil on that van. 8.8 for the stone, 500 for the pebbles. And the sculpture is 500, half a ton. So, you know, it's adding up, isn't it? Big numbers. I think they're building up the defence. The uh, the arguments building up over there. We're going to get some. They're going to be incoming. But the thing is, all the objections that came in didn't seem to be sort of that relevant to the. You know, they complained of things like like putting concrete in and stuff, but we're not using concrete. Another one was about migrating birds. It's going to interfere with migrating birds. <laughs> I think that was one of them. And a fire hazard, that was another yeah. one. No one actually said it's gonna block my view, which is what they're now moaning, uh, well, not moaning about. It's, it's fine, it's, well, I hope it's fine. I said to them, I think they expected it to be a lot bigger. You know, they just, you know, the, the lady came over a lot when I had a meeting here a couple of months ago. And uh, yeah, I think she was under the impression that it was gonna be like four meters tall and like huge, but it's not. I said it's not far off a glorified bench, really. So, yeah, well, hopefully they'll learn, you know, grow to love it. Made specially for the job, this quality. Look at that, quality craftsmanship. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Surely there's easier ways to make a living. Bit of sand. Coals. Thank goodness it's not raining. Thank you. Literally. And what time is it? Oh, my goodness me. We met down at the stage, didn't we? Half past seven. It was all right. Everything under control. It's a relief to finally get to this point, isn't it? <laughs> you know, still a few things, still time for things to go wrong though. And shunt it back. What's that now? It's not far off, is it? So we just nibble that out a bit. That's pretty good. 
because then we're going to come down a, a bit. And then that'll bring the stone level to the back of the to the back of that. And once we've got this in place, and that's when we'll then tidy up this leading edge and get that to all kind of. what you want that's it that's the that's the only bit <laughs> it's easy enough like that it's when we're lowering a three quarters of a ton of stone over the top of it tomorrow to me a bit to you a bit that's fine i quite like the idea of it tipping back a little bit yeah i mean it's only just off so Nice fine stones, you know, not to, like big chunky ones, sort of nice fine ones. Okay. Love it. So someone's going to pull them up, yeah, and uh, up. you can pull it up if you want to do some pulling up. Yep. In here is a book I've done called Hastings Beautiful Town. It's a photography book. Uh, it was released in 2009. And it's all about the sites of Hastings. And also in here, there's the comments from the, on the council website. Some positive, some negative. And there's also some of my hair in here. <laughs> so, Get it in there, Mr. The, the Wookie. There it's gone. What a perfect stone. Oh. They can live there next to a little mussel shell. Perfect. What a perfect stone. Get it installed, then I'll go, when have I got to turn up? That's the whole thing about being an artist. I mean, there was a... Uh, you know, there was discussion about all the various locations up and down the seafront, and this one was one of the pictures, this one because of the, the bushes and... Which are beautiful. Do yeah. you think yeah. your art is better than what Mother Nature provides? Yeah, no, do I don't. Think no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a weird comment, I think, from yourself. I think a bit of a weird, weird one. Weird comment, a, a, a flawed public art. It does sound that like you're a bit the, against it, though. It does sound to me. Yeah. yeah, just outside your house, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. It's not forever. I mean, it's as permanent as a park bench, you know. I've always liked to think I'm a little bit in touch with my feminine side. I like soft, gentle things. It's not all bloody... Hard and edgy, is it? Yeah, peel it back like a. How far back do you want to go further? No, that's it? probably about that's right. right. <sighs> yeah, so we've got to get the sculpture straight onto the back of the van truck and then I've got the stones already in a in a trailer and then uh, we've got to get it down to the yard which is when it goes onto the big big lorry because I can get it onto my van okay because of the forklift but I can't get it off so they'll get it off and, and gracefully lower it into place tomorrow so Hold on. Then when you do it up, it pulls on this strand. So hopefully these uh, the people will, when they see it, they'll go. Oh, he hasn't put it in. That's good then. Oh, oh, there it is under that twig. I remember her saying, "You think you're better than nature," and I went, "Yeah." As if, like, I knew you yeah, thought actually, you were better than nature. I was like, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, I'll wow. still get my way with you, don't I? And then we reverse, I'm going to reverse it onto that trailer over there. One and a half, so with the big, uh, you know, 15 kilos, so yeah, probably 20 kilos. Ah, oh, it's both the same way. Sorry, is that all right? That'd be all right. I thought I'd done it around the other way. Uh, just out of town, West Sussex. It's the closest quarry that you could get sandstone from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's it. Whoa well, up. Now come down more. Bit more down. Keep going. Whoa. Whoa. One minute. It's that one there. Right, go and try that then. We come down. Here she blows. You're in. You there? Yeah. Do it. Not quite, it's not quite. What's going on in down there? If you just take it up just a fraction. This is quite here. That is quite a lot, not out. Uh, That's it, that, that's it. Down. Right, we're off. That's it, we're on it now. That's it, she's she's there. Have we got any bolts that are not... Have you got that one? That's the non-nylock, isn't it? That. And then file off all the sharp edges on the inside. Hello. Oh, look at that. Oh. Is she filming it, is she? Are they really? Yeah, You know, it's one of those things, isn't it? Just to keep the head down. Keep my head down until it's uh, all in. in. All right. Have a little look. Oh, one more. Push the button on the back. We designed this. Now we're starting to win now. Happy days. Well done. Look. See? It's not taller than me. It's crazy. Oh, well. Well done. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Had to go in like this just because of the way that I've made it. Well, I shouldn't get too eager. Don't start pretending everything's okay. It's a bit of a guessing game, this. Well, it's nice to see it without the clutter of my workshop in the reflections. It's one of those things, isn't it? You come back to it in a, in a, in a six months' time, or year's time, and actually see how it's fared, you know. It's in about as harsh an environment as it can get. It's one of those things, it's just been a manic just trying to get it into the ground, isn't it? I mean, once that grass establishes itself again and 
everything. And I said they're like big spoons, isn't it? <laughs> Don't laugh. They won't, they won't find it funny, you know. Well, it's there whether they like it or not now. Sorry. <laughs> I, I live I live right there in uh, one of two. Oh, what do you think of it? I think it's great. I think it sort of fits in with I think it's it's got a very sort of sea vibe about it. Um yeah, I think it's great. The Foreshore Trust is run nowadays um, by the, the council, but the money from the Foreshore Trust is independent, comes from revenue from car parking on the Foreshore. So people can apply to the Foreshore Trust for funding to do things um, that, that basically benefit the community. Ordinary people have said, we want a sculpture. They nearly always say, we want Lee. But people ask why there's no sign, and I want it to become a piece of the landscape. I think it's beautiful. I think everything Lee does is beautiful. Um, I'm really impressed with it. I think he's a genius, and this is beautiful. I love it. But I know Lee's worked very well, and I couldn't think of a better person to do something so local. Well done, Lee. I really can't believe that people have objected to where it is and what it looks like, and the idea that drivers are going to get shining in their eyes from it. It's just crazy. So, very glad it's here. It's a bit, a little bit awkward, isn't it? Four and a half years, really, in the making. Um, started out a, a kind of workshop concept um, and then pitched for the funding. And here we are today, and I'm very proud of it. Well, what do we have here? Another terrific sculpture by Lee Dyer for our amazing seafront and also part of our Sustrand cycle route. But as always, it is vital to have community involvement in all of these creative projects. And we're also celebrating our schools and our young people who have been part of this finished result. Of course, none of this could happen without a driving force behind it all. And it has, and it has been brilliantly organised by Tina Morris from Sweet and Dandy. Tina has found 30 locations all over town for murals, telephone box paintings and now of course this sculpture as well. This certainly takes some doing and we are very lucky to have Tina in Hastings. So let's give Tina a huge round of applause as well. It once again shows that great art in Hastings is being made by local artists. We live in such a creative, quirky and unique town and this epitomises just that. As we all know, Lee Dyer works all over the country and this is yet another major work for his home town. <laughs> wow. Well done. Pleasure. Brilliant. I mean, just look at it, absolutely incredible. Um, and it's great that there's been community involvement in it as well. And I think that's, that really um, does show Hastings in its best light. Certainly, it certainly echoes the life of the sea, at least as far as muscles are concerned, you know. Lee is the most amazing sculpture anyway, you know that. We've got the same hairstyles. We have a lot in common, me and Lee. Look. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, you're happy with it, yeah? Absolute, ab absolutely delighted, yeah. Absolutely delighted. It's, it's a wonderful sculpture. It's fantastic to see, and this environmental thread that runs right through it is amazing. And to have all those kids from all the local schools contributing is absolutely fantastic. I mean, all, 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 all art's contra controversial yeah. in some ways. You know, people, some people don't like it, some people think, what the, what the hell is that? Some people just absolutely love it, don't they? I've cycled past it many times, and I think... I, 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 think, I think it's beautiful. And I, think, yeah, I mean, it, it, was Sue, it was Sue Beanie, she was the chair of the Foreshore Trust, that yes. came up with the idea of the sort of sculptural you know, exhibition along the seafront and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's spectacular, actually. I really love it. Well, hopefully it'll, uh, it'll calm down and find its place, and everyone will... Yeah, yeah. Down. But it, you know, if they need to move, if it needs to be moved, 
need a big lorry and some people with spades because I'll be uh, somewhere else.